13.2 is as many reps as possible in 10 minutes of five shoulder to overhead at 115 for the men, 75 for the women. 10 deadlift at 115 for the men, 75 for the women, and finally 15 box jumps. 24 inches for the men, 20 inches for the women. Any questions? Thank you. Yeah. What? Yes. Yeah. I do have questions, actually, Dave Castro. What's up with that, man? You can't just come in and drop a bomb. Ladies and gentlemen, apparently, we, the spectators, also need to be ready for anything. So the cat's out of the bag. We know what the workout is, but the show's just getting started. Tonight, it's the ladies' turn, okay? I'm gonna be honest with you guys. If you're not excited about two beautiful women throwing down in a CrossFit triplet, I don't think this is gonna work between us. Okay, let's just end it now. My name is Rory McKernan. I'm your host for the Live Open Workout Announcements. I hope that everyone is sufficiently recovered from snatches and burpees. All right, good, because 13.2 starts right now. City. Home to one of the largest and most recognizable cityscapes in the world, New York is one of the fastest growing habitats for the sport of fitness and a banner member of the Northeast region. Tonight, Kings County hosts CrossFit royalty as reigning fittest woman on earth, Amy Thor's daughter, and the SoCal phenom, Lindsay Valenzuela, battle for bragging rights in an early season mega clash. Welcome back. This is 13.2, the live workout announcement. Dave Castro just dropped the bomb. We are live at CrossFit South Brooklyn. Y'all make some noise. The energy in here, you guys can see it. We're packed. These people are on top of racks. This young lady, I was walking down the street today. She picks me up. I was hitchhiking in Brooklyn. I love being a CrossFitter. This is what it's all about, being in here with your friends. Now, if you're just tuning in, you're late, suckas. You should have been on time. Dave Castro has already announced the workout. 10 glorious minutes in AMRAP. Five shoulder to overhead, 10 deadlifts, 15 box jumps. Now, I think people in their heads, they assume that these open workouts, they have to be rocket science. You have to make up something crazy. You gotta be underwater backflips, but it doesn't. CrossFit's all about elegance, simplicity. It's what we do day in and day out. So we're gonna get to see these ladies take on basically going back to the roots, a classic CrossFit triplet. Kind of smells like two open workouts we've done in the past, 11.2 and 12.3. Annie Thor's daughter did extremely well in both of those workouts. The difference here, 10 minutes. No me gusta, 10 minutes is like a 400 meter run. You can't not go fast, this is gonna be a sprint. So Dave Castro announces this, I threw up a little bit in my mouth. You know this is gonna be brutal. In my humble opinion, these two women, there couldn't be a better matchup for this workout. It's an early season preview of what most people are saying is going to be the matchup later on at the Home Depot Center this summer. So. The workout's still to come. The athletes are now warming up. We'll get a closer look at the workout standards right now. For this 10 minute AMRAP, your score will be the total number of repetitions that you complete. Each round, we'll see five shoulder to overhead, 10 deadlifts, and 15 box jumps. Each repetition starts from the front rack position finishes overhead locked out. Deadlift begins with the bar on the floor and finishes when the athlete has stood the bar up to full extension of the hips and knees and the shoulders are clearly visible behind the bar. Once the athlete lands on the box, we need to see full extension of the hips and the knees. Once that position is achieved, the athlete may step down or jump down from the box for the next rep. Hey guys, how about let's hear it for the second fittest woman in the world, Julie Fouché, who set those standards on the workout. 
Julie was kind enough to come out to Santa Cruz, set the standard for all of us, and also test drive some of these workouts. I got a little secret. Julie bagged nine rounds plus four reps on this workout, despite that she had a bruised Achilles. Now, she said she thinks this evening we're gonna see maybe 13 rounds. I think that I'm in agreement, but it doesn't really matter what I think. Let's hear from some Nyakas. You guys wanna hear from CrossFit Brooklyn? You, sir. Yes. I'm guessing you were one of these people on the internet, saw that Lindsay Valenzuela was stepping in, you thought it's gonna be heavy. Was this what you were expecting for the workout? Not at all, not at all. It's, uh, it's lightweight, it's gonna have to keep moving. It's a, it's a tough one. Do you like it better or worse than 11, or than 13-1? Oh, better, much better, yeah. <laughs> I'm not with you on that, but thank you. Um, young lady, there's a shirt that says lift like Lindsay, but I haven't seen the 10 minute AMRAP like Lindsay shirt yet. How do you think she's gonna do against the champ? I think this workout's gonna be all about aggression, and I think Lindsay has plenty of that, so I can't wait to see it. Nice, and you two are both locals from CrossFit South Brooklyn? All right, let's make some noise for the locals. We'll have to see what happens in the actual workout. We have a short break now. When we come back, we'll hear from these two women. This live open workout announcement is brought to you by Rogue Fitness, the official equipment supplier of the 2013 Reebok CrossFit Games. Because functional movement is so important in CrossFit, the apparel really matters. Before Reebok, you had to have four different pair of shoes, all different types of apparel. My performance is up to me, but wearing Reebok CrossFit apparel gives me one less thing to worry about. The Nano fits pretty much any workout you do. You can do box jumps in it, you can do something heavy in it. Not having to think about how you feel in your gear can take seconds off your time. Reebok has definitely become the authority on CrossFit gear and apparel. If you haven't heard of CrossFit, let me tell you about CrossFit. I think it's the absolute best way to help you reach your fitness goals. I like the challenge. I compete with myself. The reward for doing well is the ability to express your fitness in everyday life. I really like the social aspect of it. Everyone is welcoming. Everyone is cheering you on. We all share this experience, which is emotional. It's my passion. It's a lifestyle. It's my outlet that ends up making you better as an individual. Every day we're changing lives in this place. It's just a better way to live. Welcome back. We are live in Brooklyn for the announcement of workout 13.2. Annie Thor's daughter, the defending champion, now warming up, as well as Lindsay Valenzuela, the SoCal phenom. We're going to get a chance to meet these ladies a little bit better in a, in a moment. But first, before we move on, let's look back at what happened in 13.1 when we were live in Charlotte, North Carolina. Dan Bailey, the veteran, took on the up-and-comer Scott Panchik, the fourth-place finisher from last year's games. Let's take a look at the live action from Charlotte, North Carolina. Last week, we made a pit stop in NASCAR's backyard. When CrossFit Vitality hosted two-time sixth-place finisher Dan Bailey head-to-head -head with fourth place from last year, Scott Panchik. It was off to the races as Bailey felt the need for speed early, blowing by the Burpee King in the first round en route to an early lead. But Panchik relied on his superior pacing to catch his fellow Central East rival and secure himself an early season victory. 13.1. It's time for the women of CrossFit to set the bar for 13-2. Let me understate it greatly and say that 13-1 was awesome. An amazing atmosphere at CrossFit Vitality. We packed 800 people into the box to watch Panchik and Bailey. Let's give those guys some credit. On that one workout, they both finished in the top 25 worldwide. Bailey 21st, Scott Panchik fifth in the world. Let's give it up for those guys. Come on now. So standing, standing pretty on the leaderboard. But let's get back to what's on hand here, the ladies. Think about this, guys. You just heard the workout announcement. I'm guessing that you don't really want to take it on immediately. Lindsay Valenzuela was called in the 11th hour to fly across the country 
for a workout she didn't know against the defending champion of the world, and she stepped up. 2000, the 2000 ver 2013 model of Lindsay Valenzuela is legit. Let's get a closer look. I'm Lindsay Valenzuela. I'm 25 years old, and I train at Valley CrossFit. I've always been an emotional athlete, you know. I have pictures from when I played volleyball at Cal Lutheran where I'm screaming and doing this like fist thing where I look like I'm gonna kill someone, but I'm just so fired up. Qualifying for this year's CrossFit Games was intense, I think. Give me it. But I think all that emotion comes from nothing's ever been handed to me. You know, I've seen and heard people say, oh, well, you know, if you don't do that, well, it's fine. And, oh, of course she did well, she's a lifter. And they kind of say negative stuff, and that makes me angry. So it's like, okay, i got to prove them wrong, too. And then you have this calming force, like I said, my family. So my emotions come from both aspects. I might not be the fastest. I might not be the most gymnasty out there, but I'll tell you what, I'm never gonna stop. Ever stop believing in what I can do. No one can take that away from me. And the entire crowd wants to see this lift happen. Valenzuela is under it, and she will stand it up. What an incredible effort. I like being known as the girl that can lift a lot of weight. But when I was asked to come out here, people immediately thought, oh, well, it's going to be a heavy workout. I don't even know if it's going to be a heavy workout. I have no idea what it's going to be. Okay, well, I hope I can prove myself, and I hope it is a body weight movement and not just known as a girl that can lift a lot of weight. And maybe people will say run like Lindsay one day. <laughs> 2013 is my year. You're welcome. <laughs> So Lindsay has been steadily climbing through the ranks as she improves her fitness. Remember that her first showing in the CrossFit Games, she also placed second at nationals in Olympic weightlifting. Pretty, pretty impressive. So this year, ninth place at the Games. Currently after 13.1, she stands at fifth place overall in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Lindsay Valenzuela. Lindsay, you're, uh, you're often painted with a strong girl brush. How do you feel about this workout? Uh, I'm excited about it. It's only 10 minutes, so uh, thank God it's not 17. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I definitely think it's a different mobi mobility, and it's going to definitely test our endurance, which I've been working on. So I'm excited to see how um, my conditioning has been working so far. Yeah, and you've been a busy girl in the off season. You've been cleaning up. So that, that endurance, I think, uh, you excited to show it off? Yes, I am. And I just got done training with Ru uh, Ruth Horrell Anderson from New Zealand. And she's quite the runner. So she's been kicking my butt for the last five weeks. So I'm excited. Outstanding. Now, you talk a lot about confidence in your videos and your interviews. How do you feel? Can you beat the champ in this workout? I think anybody's beatable. So um, if it's not me now, it's going to be someone else later. So good luck. Lindsay's certainly going to have her work cut out for her. She's going up against the two-time world champion, Annie Thor's daughter. Let's get a closer look at Annie. In Norse mythology, Thor is known as a god of storms, thunder, and strength. As a literal daughter of Thor, Annie Thor's daughter combined those qualities throughout her game's career. She created a storm in 2010, finishing in second, 2011, she thundered through the games to become the first female European to claim the title fittest on earth. I am 23 years old, and I'm the fittest woman in the world twice. <laughs> now you can see that patented Iceland Annie smile. Thor's daughter asking for some help from the crowd. One more rep for Annie Thor's daughter. Reba CrossFit Games. I've been able to see the world and I would say grow a lot through these years and my favorite is the emails that I tend to get from people about their life stories and how I've actually been able to influence them in a positive and good way. Her rise to fame parallels the rapid growth of the sport. Iceland Annie has become the first megastar of CrossFit, making celebrity appearances, navigating crowds of fans and even representing her country at the CrossFit Invitational. 
Has her new fame status impeded on her training schedule, or has it driven her to reach to greater heights? What keeps me motivated and going to the gym every single day is the feeling afterwards, the rewards that you get after training, and can't even imagine my life without CrossFit. There's not, that's right, just give it up for the champ. There's not much more that you can say than two-time world champion, the fittest woman in the world, maybe in history. After 13.1, Annie currently sits in second place in the world. Guys, let's give it up again for Annie. Andy, this is a lot like 11.2, 12.3, only the time domain a lot shorter. Instead of 17, 18 minutes, we've got a 10 minute workout. Does it change anything about your strategy? Um, I would say that you should be able to go faster then. You don't really need to pace yourself as much, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going hard and fast out of the gates. Yeah, I think like the first two rounds are going to be like that, and then I'm going to see how I feel, if I need to slow down or if it's a good pace. I think in the box jumps, you should be able to get some sort of a rest because you're stopping on top of the box. Let's talk about, there's a little rumor. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's your, maybe, you know, the rest of us might have to slow down a little bit more. <laughs> the, uh, now, you, uh, you reported a back injury early in the season. 13.1, looked like you did okay. You were uh, second in the world. Kristen just came in and, and scooped it out at the last minute. How's your back uh, going to factor into this workout? I hope it's going to be okay. Um, I haven't done deadlifts for three, four months now, but it's light, so I think it should be fine. I hope so. Champ, good luck. Guys, let's hear it for Annie Thor's daughter. So we know the workout. We know the standards. It's time now for the action. You guys ready to see this? You guys ready to see 13.2 live? For the competition call, we're going to go to former NFL lineman and CrossFit affiliate owner John Jansen. He's alongside the 2008 fittest woman on earth, Katie Henniger. Thanks, Rory. We are moments away from 13.2. It's not a complicated workout. We've got one bar, one box, three movements. Sometimes simple can be very effective, Katie. Yeah, some of you guys are going to see this on paper and think it's not that bad, but beware. These are usually the workouts. The most simple are always the most effective. Now that we've had a little time to digest the announcement, uh, what do you make of this workout and, and what is going through the athletes' minds right now? For these athletes, this barbell is light. The workout is gonna move quick, so they need to make sure they're hitting the movement standards and not getting any reps taken away. Last year in 12.3, a similar workout to this. Uh, Annie Thor's daughter put up uh, an amazing 519 reps. Box jumps, push up, push press, toes the bar. 18 minute AMRAP, how does this compare? What's going through the athletes' minds with 10 minutes in this workout? Well, I think we just heard Annie say it. 10 minutes, there's really no room for them to hide. They need to pick a pace that pushes their threshold, but make sure they don't go out too fast in the beginning. Well, we are, again, only moments away. Annie and Lindsay are both prepared to take their first reps in this workout, 10 minutes long. We'll take a quick break. When we return, it will be Annie versus Lindsay in 13.2. When we bring water to rural Kenya, what we're gonna do is free the women from the portage of water. What we can do then is get these gals in the business of agriculture. We can get them farming and raising livestock, and uh, it's gonna be a better life for everyone. And we're gonna do it because we can, we're gonna do it because it needs to be done, we're gonna do it because we're the kind of people that do things like that. CrossFit makes people better. You haven't heard of CrossFit? Let me tell you about CrossFit. I think it's the absolute best way to help you reach your fitness goals. I like the challenge. I compete with myself. The reward for doing well is the ability to express your fitness in everyday life. I really like the social aspect of it. Everyone is welcoming. Everyone is cheering you on. We all share this experience, which is emotional. It's my passion. It's a lifestyle. It's my outlet. It ends up making you better as an individual. Every day, we're changing lives in this place. It's just a better way to live. Back to 13.2, we are getting set for a 10 minute AMRAP and as you hear, we are 30 seconds away. The triplet will be five shoulder to overhead, 10, 10 seconds, deadlifts, 10 and seconds. 15 box Stay jumps. Up. Dave Cashel will lead us Three, into this workout. Three, two, one, go. 
And we are off. The shoulder to overhead, not a heavy weight for these girls. They will go right into the deadlift, 10 deadlifts with that 75 pound weight. I expect both of these ladies with this weight to go in unbroken in both the push press and the deadlift. Is there any complication with this light weight as they move to the box jump in terms of their reps? Not really complications. The biggest thing for them is the quick as they are moving is not to miss any reps. A no rep in, in this type of workout would be very crucial. As you can see, they're going neck and neck right now in the box jumps. They will probably be going neck and neck throughout this workout. And Annie is the first one through round one. Quick into the shoulder to overhead. Annie finished that first round just under 45 seconds, setting a blazing pace here. The pace that was set by Julie Fouché earlier was one minute, so you can see what it what it does to, to get up on that box and jump back down, how much faster you can cycle that. It'll depend as this workout goes on, will that tire them out? Annie's known for her engine. What I thought from the start is that Annie would push the pace to see if she could get Lindsay to follow her. Lindsay's been straining her conditioning. We heard from her uh, prior to the event starting. She wants to see where she's at after tra training with Harrell. And he's about three or four reps ahead of Lindsay right now. This workout going head to head, most of the time you see the results posted either on Saturday or Sunday, and you don't see the, the workout that they do head to head. Having this right now, looking each other in the eye, do you think Annie will push that pace even faster to try and get Lindsay to match that? Annie's one of the most competitive athletes in the CrossFit Games, and Lindsay is up there as well. Going face to face in this open with this crowd here tonight is just a perfect event for these two. And as you can see, they cycle through the box jumps right there. It's very important on these box jumps on the top of the box. This 20-inch box, you have to stand all the way up, extend the knees, extend the hips. And he moves on. Only a few reps ahead of Lindsay right now. You can see the focus in Lindsay's eyes as she, she glanced over here real quick. She's not focused on what Annie's doing right now. She's focused on what, what she has to do. We talked to both athletes this morning, and they said they usually have one or two plans going into the workout, but they didn't find out the workout until about 10 minutes beforehand. I think they had a plan A. Both seem to be following that and still pushing the pace. We are two minutes and 50 seconds into this 10-minute workout. No signs of slowing down so far, which I don't necessarily know that we will see very many signs of slowing down in a 10 minute workout. Annie has been very, very good at these workouts in the past. Yeah, and you heard her say there is no room for what rest here. It's 10 minutes, she's gonna go all out. You see Lindsay start to take a few breaths here in between the box jumps going into the push press. And that'll be key as people are watching at home and they start to, to develop their strategies when they do this workout. When am I going to take my breast? Where am I going to position the bar? What is going to be the most efficient way for me to do this workout? And he's about five reps ahead of Lindsay. If she can continue this, she will be very well on her way to winning this workout. And as we had stated earlier, Annie going into this workout was number two in the world. Lindsay number five. Annie will try and distance herself from anybody, and, and she has been recovering from that back injury, but it doesn't look like these deadlifts are, are affecting her at all or anything overhead. No, she's told us that she did not go, she hasn't heavy deadlifted in over three months, but with this light weight, 75 pounds should not tax her back as much as a heavy deadlift would. On this deadlift with that 75 pound bar, the key is you have to get to full extension. Both your knees, your hips have to get to full extension for that rep to count. You can see Annie and Lindsay was doing it in the last round as well. They're staying with a consistent pace on their box jumps. Don't want to push too fast so that they can get back to the bar and still have some gas left. They have a, a very smooth motion on those box jumps. And, and again, Annie first off the box, moving straight to the bar. And you can see a, just a little bit of a dip at the end there. They're starting to jerk a little bit. Katie did it on that last round. How does that affect their time? And, and is it 
necessarily a negative to start off with that? It's not a negative, and I think it's actually smart on both of their parts. They're conserving a little bit of energy by going to the jerk. It's taking out uh, the box jumps are taking a little bit out of them. And that's the first time we've seen Katie drop the bar after that five shoulder to overhead. She dropped the bar. Every time you let go of that bar, it, it takes away seconds from your time. And he set out a very fast pace. You can see both of these athletes are starting to slow just a bit at the five and a half minute mark of this workout. Now they are, they are past halfway. They're on the downhill course. And Annie is about 10 reps ahead of, of Lindsay at this point. Annie's having very smooth transitions between the push press and the deadlift, wasting no time. Every move that she makes, and, and you see this throughout the games last year uh, in 2011 and this year, is so efficient. She wastes no time and no effort. She's wasting no time, but uh, Valenzuela has went to dropping the bar in between the press and the deadlift. Right now, Annie's about 13 reps ahead. She's about to get her last box jump in, and she will be moving back to the bar in only a matter of moments. This is what we had talked to Lindsay about before. When she sees an athlete that she's going head to head against, get a little bit of relief. Does she change her strategy? And for her, it was a matter of, I want to stick to my plan. If my plan going in wasn't good enough, then that's my fault. And right now, you can see she is sticking to her plan and doing what she can to, to stay in this race. And she's told us in the offseason, she's really focused on her mental toughness, preparing for just staying within herself, staying within her game plan, and moving forward in the event. We've got three minutes to go in this workout, and this is where you have to make that mental decision. Everybody who, who has done some of these workouts understands it is so hard to push through that. As a competitor yourself, what is going through your mind at this point, especially if you're in Lindsay's shoes right now and you see Annie off the box right before you get there? Off the box and clapping. She knows it's down the wire. Two and a half minutes left. She is going to give it her all here. Last two minutes, and she's done for the day. It's amazing to me how athletes can smile and, and wave to the crowd. At this point of the workout, when I do it, I am going to be absolutely gassed. Yeah, Annie's known for her smile, but she's done a great job pushing the pace, staying consistent, just like she told Rory in the beginning, wanting to stay consistent and pushing Lindsay through this workout. We are entering our final two minutes. We have eight minutes elapsed, and right now Annie is about three quarters of a round ahead of Lindsay. Lindsay's starting to take deep breaths in between each of these uh, movements. She needs to really push here in the last minute 45 of this, this workout. And you know she will. You saw that fire uh, in, in, in the, the plays before. She is going to have that fire and give it everything she has. This is also a great way for her to measure herself against the world's fittest woman. Well, there was questions surrounding Annie coming in with the back injury and being limited in some of her movements. She did well in 13. She looks great here in 13.2. We have about 75 seconds left in this workout, and Annie is absolutely not slowing down. She also knows she's not competing against Lindsay. She is tonight, but she's competing against everyone in the world. And if she doesn't want to do this workout again, she's going to get the best score she possibly can tonight. seconds right now. What is going through Annie's mind? She knows that she's going to win tonight. How many reps? Does she set a goal for herself or is she just trying to finish this workout? 30 seconds left. Right now with under a minute left, she is just trying to get as many reps as possible before that buzzer goes off. She knows that every rep counts in this open. And we're down to 20 seconds. Annie is trying to finish her 12th round. She did get a rep taken away there. Down to 10 seconds. These athletes are giving it everything they can, trying to get every rep possible. Lindsay gets to the bar. And 
that is the time. Both athletes able to get a couple of push presses in there at the end, shoulder to overhead. What an amazing, amazing feat by both of these ladies. What a great job. We knew that uh, Annie would set the pace going into this. There were questions around, but the champ looks like she's where she needs to be going into this Open. Yep, she set the bar, and she continues to set the bar as, as we watch and see what is going on. And the official, Annie has 361 reps to Lindsay Valenzuela, 335 reps. Did this go how you saw it going? Yeah, this event went how I thought it would. Annie set the pace. She said from the beginning she wasn't going to slow down. You really didn't see much difference between minute one and minute ten for her. Well, we had a great chance to talk about it. Now let's go down to Rory and get his thoughts on this workout. I'm sorry, did that just happen? Is it done? That was ridiculously fast. Annie Thor's daughter just did not slow down. Lindsay Valenzuela is still an amazing effort. These two ladies just, just put it down. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, I don't think that these two times are going to be beat. Yeah, I don't know, even Lindsay's time to, to, towards the top of the leaderboard. We have a short break now. We'll be right back with the rest of 13.2. Because functional movement is so important in CrossFit, the apparel really matters. Before Reebok, you had to have four different pair of shoes, all different types of apparel. My performance is up to me, but wearing Reebok CrossFit apparel gives me one less thing to worry about. The Nano fits pretty much any workout you do. You can do box jumps in it, you can do something heavy in it. Not having to think about how you feel in your gear can take seconds off your time. Reebok has definitely become the authority on CrossFit gear and apparel. You haven't heard of CrossFit? Let me tell you about CrossFit. I think it's the absolute best way to help you reach your fitness goals. I like the challenge. I compete with myself. The reward for doing well is the ability to express your fitness in everyday life. I really like the social aspect of it. Everyone is welcoming. Everyone is cheering you on. We all share this experience, which is emotional. It's my passion. It's a lifestyle. It's my outlet that ends up making you better as an individual. Every day, we're changing lives in this place. It's just a better way to live. When we bring water to rural Kenya, what we're gonna do is free the women from the portage of water. What we can do then is get these gals in the business of agriculture. We can get them farming and raising livestock, and uh, it's gonna be a better life for everyone. And we're gonna do it because we can, we're gonna do it because it needs to be done, we're gonna do it because we're the kind of people that do things like that. CrossFit makes people better. I think that we all got what we came for. Can we hear it for the athletes again, guys? CrossFit South Brooklyn. Let's have a look at how it all went down. Fast and hard out of the gates, both ladies. And he's setting the pace really on the first round on the box jumps. The ladies went rep for rep on the first two rounds and just setting a pace. I don't think that I've ever seen on box jumps cycling those quick. Good job, CrossFit South Brooklyn. Looking crazy in the background. <laughs> All right, ladies, that was an amazing, amazing effort. Look at Lindsay was trying to make up ground, and towards the end, Annie just never lost her pace. Annie, let's talk about this workout. What an amazing effort. Did you have a plan going in, and did it alter during the workout? Uh, I had the plan going in, going hard through the first two rounds and seeing where it would hurt the most. And if my shoulders would get tired, I would start doing push jerks. And if uh, my grip got tired, I was going to change the grip in there and go into the lock grip on the deadlift. I never had to do that because I never really felt my grip or shoulders as 
really lightweight, so it was pretty much just cardio. <laughs> and yeah, it was the same with the box jumps. If I would have to slow down, I was gonna just pause a bit longer on the top every single time. And yeah, I didn't really, I don't know. I felt like I started slowing down a bit as soon as I was able to pass you a bit more, but <laughs> otherwise it was, it was a good workout. Yeah, it, it did not look slow, just so you know. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, fantastic job. You're also a CrossFit affiliate owner. Do you have any advice for uh, your athletes who are going to take this workout on? Uh, kind of the same as I said. Do the push jerks if your upper body is a bit more tired because you want to be able to use your arms as well when you do the box jump so you don't want to be completely fried there. And pace yourself. If the box jumps are really difficult, you're allowed to do step ups. So maybe do 10 box jumps and go then into, a five, into five step ups and so on. But yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a, it's a pretty simple workout. <laughs> well, thank you for the show. It's good to see the champ early in the season. Guys, let's hear it for Annie. <laughs> Lindsay Valenzuela, you didn't win the head-to-head -head matchup, but we talked about this earlier. You guys aren't even in the same region. You told me that your goal right now is to qualify for regionals. We're looking at, at small incremental steps. Right. So any room for improvement or did you leave it on the court? Are you gonna do this one again? Uh, no. <laughs> uh. <laughs> One and done. Um, I know everyone in SoCal is looking at my score and going to beat it probably, but I'm confident regionals, you don't get a retry. It's only one and done, so I'm confident, you know, going in after that. So the only thing I need to work on is probably box jumps because those killed my back. Nothing else bothered me but the box jumps. So it was the pounding just bugged my back a little bit. <laughs> well, it looked fantastic. And to be honest, I think even your score is going to stand up on the leaderboard. So fantastic thank job you. and thank you both thank for the you. show. Thank Guys, let's hear for these athletes. One more question, and this question actually goes out to the director of the CrossFit Games, Dave Castro. Dave, 17 minutes of burpees to start with. Then a quick 10 minute AMRAP, lightweight, completely split on the script. Seems like a pretty simple programming. I think people always want something crazy. Talk to me about the programming of the Open. Well, in the Open, we're gonna keep it very uh, traditional CrossFit and we're gonna keep it accessible to a lot of people. So we're thinking about next week doing Fran, rest three minutes and then Murph. Um, I don't know, but I think that one might be a little hard to pull off. So you can, you can expect, in all, the, in all our programming through the games, you can expect us to stay pretty uh, classic and traditional in the, uh, in the layouts of the workouts. Outstanding. And I know that you have one shout out to give before we take off. Yeah, I'd love to say thank you to David Osario and CrossFit Brooklyn for hosting us. Let's give a big round of applause to David Osario. Where is he? Where is David? Come out here, David. Come down. Come down. Let's get him down here. He's busted his ass for us for these past two days to host an amazing event. Thank you, of course, to David. And one more time, thank you to these amazing athletes for laying it down on the line for you guys to watch. Let's give it up for the athletes, guys. And last but not least, thank you, all of you, all of you at home, the fans, community members of CrossFit. You're just an amazing community, the best thing to be a part of. That's it. The hardest part of saying goodbye is that we all have to go do this workout. Anybody with me? Yeah. It's time for us to go hit it. Uh, you guys, hit this workout hard, have fun, and until next week, I will see you on the leaderboard. Good night. Tune in next week for the battle in Boulder. We head over the Rockies, where CrossFit Roots host a showdown between the fittest woman on earth from 2010, Kristen Clever, and the Dark Horse third place finisher from last year, Helena Fortunato. Can Clever avenge the Fran loss that cost her the podium at the 2012 Games? The answer, next week, live on games.crossfit.com. <laughs>